This is Dispatches from Myrtle Beach with Charles Neal and my son, Link. And how you doing, son? Oh, you didn't say from Good Mythical Morning. You, yeah, we're oh, done yeah. with that. We're done with that. I'm doing good, Dad. I like the little yeah. jingle, the little jingle in the bells today. Yeah, yes, it's the holidays, and we done been through part of them, so mm -hmm. now we got to get through Christmas. So. Got to get through Christmas, and I can't help but notice that you seem very elvish. Yeah, I, I'm, 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 I'm gonna be. I'm trying to be your elf today, and and you. My you sexy elf. Up, but yeah, yeah, yeah. Your sex. It, it, it's all the Myrtle Beast is sexy elf too. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I didn't get the memo. I'm sorry. I didn't dress up like uh, like an elf or I don't know who you would. Santa Claus or whoever. But that's sorry. fine. Yeah. Wow. It's a, that thing yeah. is. It's kind of low slung there, Dad. I know I've yeah, seen a picture of it, but now I'm seeing it like, yeah, it's, like live. Yeah. And does it go all the way down to your belly button? No, it don't go quite that far. But uh, it goes. He is wearing a velour <laughs> elf costume, and I don't want to see the bottom part because I know that's where that just looks like you're wearing underwear. I didn't wear them. I just got a. I I, I just got. Regular pants on, so you don't have to worry about that. Good, good. Uh, well, I'm noticing a couple of other things. Two, you, you, you try. Are you? What are you trying to do with this beard of yours? What you? I know you saw me over Thanksgiving. We'll we'll give everybody a recap on that. But it seems like I you're did, trying I, to take I, a cue I, from I, me with yeah, your beard. I, I I just I just thought you know it's. You know, Christy said that she really liked your beard, and yeah. she uh, and I and I, I told Nancy. Uh, of course, I let's see, what has it been? It's, it ain't been quite two weeks, but yeah. uh, I told Nancy. I said, I believe I'm before we do the podcast. I'm not going to shave anymore. See if I can catch up with Link. I don't believe I quite caught you up. Did, but, you you didn't because mine kept going too, Dad. Oh yeah, but you hey, but your yours has got a lot more little dark spots in it. It looks like mine's just <laughs> gonna be just white. Yours so is totally gray. It, Which, gray or white, whatever. I'm telling you, maybe I I might be a good Santa Claus. <laughs> this is all over with, but this with I, the way mine is. I know. I'm kind of surprised that it's. And I mean, first of all, every time around this time of year, I let my beard grow out a little bit. And I just want to see what the salt and pepper proportions are. And I yep. I would say that what what do you think the percentage of silver is in my beard? It's it's the majority. Oh yeah, except for yours it's about the same, except for you, your mustache and a yep. little bit but all all this everything on you here. is is salt. There's not much pepper. Yeah, yeah it ain't yeah it ain't. it's Hey, and it used to when I did it, it was uh, salt, and then it had a red tint to it. it had some red in it. Really, and I don't, I don't see no red going on now. So I don't know. But you have less gray at the top of your head than me, definitely. Yeah, that's what. Hey, that's <clears throat> that's what people give me hell about when I grow a beard and it's all this white and gray and everything. They tell me, said, see. see I know you've been putting something on your hair. You got to be coloring it because your beard's a, it's white and your hair is it's still black with just a little bit of right uh, gray or white in it. So I I I, get, I catch up the country with it, but that because I don't put nothing on my hair. It's just what the good Lord gave me. He doesn't just put like anything yours. on his hair, y'all. You need to lay off. Yeah. <laughs> I I mean, when is the last time you grew your beard out? I cannot remember. Seeing you with a full beard, it, you know what? It's probably been thirty years since I grew a beard. Yeah, I think I grew one one time for like maybe a week, and I saw that it was doing all this, and I said, "The heck with this! That thing's got to go." Yeah, and I said so. I mean, I feel like I look a lot older with it, and I gotta say, I think you do too. That's why, yeah. <laughs> I can't really yeah. tell if the, what the elf outfit is doing for it because I'm seeing it yeah. like all together. But like, uh, 
But hey, it matches all these hairs down here too. Yeah, in your chest. <laughs> yeah. 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 Because they they white and gray gray too. So you know. They, what is they what does all, Nancy all think all about it now that she's seeing it? Well, she she liked it. She said after it had been on for about a week, maybe a little bit less, she said, I think it'll be all right. But we we're gonna have to wait and see. How it keeps going. I don't and, know, Dad. I think you you kind of look a little haggard at this point. Uh, it's and I don't and I don't mean the the country legend either. You know what I'm saying? But hey, I I hadn't noticed it before, but it it kind of matches my eyebrows too, don't it? <laughs> yeah, it does. Your eyebrows have gotten gray. Mine are getting grayer mm-hmm. too, but like with my glasses, my glasses tend to cover up my eyebrows to the point where you can't notice that they're getting a little lighter. Getting a little lighter. Yeah. Are you sick? That's the other thing I'm noticing. You got a little yeah. bit of the sniffles. Got the got this sign of stuff. Yeah. I didn't work one day um Monday. I just didn't feel like it. Well, that's your good, good. You know, who's the boss? You get to decide, right? Yeah, that's right. That, that would be correct. And I did decide. But, well, take it easy. I want you to get to feeling better. But I'm glad yeah. you can still do this. Now what we we got to talk about Thanksgiving, right? We got to give people oh, the update. Yeah. So let, let can I just start and say You just go ahead. This idea that I am going to take full credit for. Full credit for. You've given that's, you you told me it was my idea. That's right. But and I'll Total give you credit in a minute, but it, this was when it comes to Thanksgiving, I think this was the, the grandest idea I have ever had is getting you to make just a a mess of ribs. I'm talking, I showed up at Nana's house, and I looked over there on the side of the house, and he had that cooker backed up. This, a kind of cooker that's so big, you got to pull it b- behind your truck. This is a pig yeah. cooker. Yeah. And then I go up there, I, I give you a hug, and then I see the smoke billowing out of that thing. And after a couple of minutes, you opened it up. And it was packed from end to end, top to bottom. You even had a couple of extra slabs of ribs that were like double <laughs> stacked because they wouldn't fit. You had this thing over capacity smoking these pork ribs. <laughs> and I was like... The turkeys can have the day off. The turkeys can have the year off. The turkeys can just forget about it because this is where it's at. And it was, how long do you cook these ribs? I started them, in, I started them at 10.30 in the morning, and I took them, started cutting them apart and putting them in the thing at 3.30. So the, Low and slow, 11.30, 12.30. One thirty, two thirty, five hours. Cooked them five hours. And I was like, well, is it, are they going to be overcooked? Is it going to be right? I should never have even questioned you, Dad, because everybody's lining up. And it was, it was, it was perfection. I, I mean, I don't know what, what's the secret? It was just absolutely perfection. Well, it's, I mean, patience? I cooked them on. I cooked them on about two hundred and fifty degrees, and cooked them two and a half hours on one side, and then flipped them over and didn't mess with them again, and cooked them about two and a half more hours, and just just let them cook real what, slow. Cause but what's we, the prep for it? Like, what did you do? What? How did you? Did you do anything special to prep the rib? Like you, you take the oh, um, yeah, like that. You strip off the backing of the rib, right? Yep. Whatever that, like, I call it like saran wrap. It's hard to pull off. You got to pull that off. But, yeah, but, you know, you can tell the people, I didn't just cook, like, the rib part. I cooked the whole rib that you get that it's got the tenderloin piece in the middle of it. Yeah. I mean, it's a whole rack of ribs. But I take, and I'll tell people this, I just take uh, salt and pepper and light brown sugar and 
some cayenne pepper and mix it all up in a bag. And ain't got a whole lot of cayenne pepper in it. But I mixed a big bag up. And then that morning when I took the back off the ribs and washed them and cleaned them up, then I, I, got, I dried them up and r- put that rub all over them and put them on the grill. Chrissy was like taking video of you chopping collards too. Oh yeah, I got she was all made up all her, the baby. all the collards out of my garden and cooked them. It was them and, it was it was a good alternative Thanksgiving, and it it was just my turkey is such a loser. Like th- this was such a winner. Thank you for doing that because I know that, that like the time investment, like even I mean we we came back by the next a few days later. Two days later, when we were going to fly back home, we just wanted to say, see Nana one more time. You were still there packing up stuff. Yeah, come you know, there back was so to much get stuff, my grill. So much stuff to <laughs> yeah. get. Like, I mean, so yeah. it was, you know, it was no... I, people appreciate how good something tastes, but if you don't put all the work into it, it's hard to know how much work goes into it. And I just want to yeah. tell you that, like... I appreciate it. It was it was totally worth it. So I had the best idea, and you had the best execution, and that makes us the best duo in the history of Thanksgiving. Oh yeah, and they, I think there was twenty seven people that was there that felt the same way. And that is by far the biggest Thanksgiving we've ever had. You know, it's, yeah. I mean, w- once you kind of took the reins, and then like Nancy sent out the text to like this huge group. I was like, whoa, we got a crowd showing up because Nancy's family showed up, her daughters and, you know, their partners and kids and um, as well as like our side of the family. And of course, mom was there too. Mom, and yeah, yeah. Uh, so yeah, 27 people. There was even a guy there, like one of the boyfriends of the, one of the daughters of, it's like, it almost felt like a family reunion. Like I was like, now, who are you related to? But the, there was the <laughs> yeah. one guy who was a, um, um, he was a bucking, bucking bull rider. Yeah, bu- not yeah. a bucking bronco, but a bu- uh, he was a bull rider, and he was talking about how he had recently, like, broken his back. He's just walking around waiting for a rib. Young guy. Yep. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Had you talked to this guy? You know who I'm talking about. I think I had met him maybe one time. That was Taylor's boyfriend, Carl's daughter's boyfriend. So he, I was, I was um, interrogating him about his his rodeo days, which are still going, even though he's been stomped on by cattle. <laughs> so thank you, Dad. That was, that was the Thanksgiving to remember. I think if it's not next year, next next time we're doing Thanksgiving, we'll have to come back around to it. You know, we can't forget how good of a time we had. Oh yeah. So how's the, how have things been since then? What, what give us, give me the rest of a dispatch. What's new? You know, <clears throat> the holidays are here, but I'm not going anywhere, but this is our last full episode of the year, but we'll still be releasing many dispatches until we're back with a full episode on January the 9th. This is our last one of the year, but you got some mini ones coming in. All right. Cause I, I got I got to get ready to go to Aruba. What for Christmas? You gonna be in Aruba for Christmas? The ninth through the sixteenth. You with the same friends? Well, we, uh, Pat and Diane's going back with us, but Bill and Jane's going Ooh. with us. So we got six of us going this year. You gonna up to Annie? You gonna party harder? What y'all gonna do? Well, we we gonna have to throw down. Hey, anything goes in Aruba. It's all inclusive and just all inclusive. Yeah, all inclusive. Yeah. Well, I look forward to hearing about it. Yeah. Because you know we're going to New Zealand, and we will yeah. be there for uh, Christmas and New Year's. So that's like this is like a super ambitious trip. We're going, you know, we're going to become hobbits. Do you even know what a hobbit is? Uh, no, I, I maybe a little bit. I think I've seen it's from a movie. Movie and on TV and what, what is uh, it? Little little bitty short. I don't. How how are you gonna be short? Well, it's all. Pers- it looks it, like you got a long nose and. Uh, I'm gonna visit the Hobbit holes, but you can't oh, tell me okay. what movie it's from. Um, 
No. What about no. okay? What about, there's also wizards. Gandalf the wizard. It's also in this movie. No. See, no. I don't watch that stuff, so it don't tickle my fancy. It's based on a book series. Written by J.R.R. R. Tolkien. It's You're a, still trying to help me, but it a, ain't there's, helping. There's orcs. <laughs> orcs. 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 Yeah. Uh, hmm. Yeah. There's orcs and dwarves and... You still don't have a guess, Dad? Just give me uh, a guess. What kind of... What's a movie? I can't remember. It's just... Gone away. Hey, when you get old, sometimes you can't. Lord, Lord of the Rings. There it is, Dad. You actually knew of the Rings. Once I told you the Lord mm-hmm. part, that's good. Yeah. 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 All right. So we're gonna experience the land of Lord of the Rings. <sighs> mm. So. So what is the sharing? weather like in New Zealand? New Zealand. It's that- summertime there. Yeah. That's why we're going over our. Oh. You know, December break, the cr- the school break, instead of going in our summer because it be, it will be winter there. So the That's weather should be I mean, nice. I'm, I may have to mark that down. I may have to go over there in December. Sometime. You don't even you don't you don't even know what Lord of the Rings is. I'll tell it, it's it's supposed to be a beautiful place. So I'll let you know. I'll give you a full report. Yeah. Don't worry. Well, that's what Nancy looked up last night. What the temperature was going to be. In a Reuben, it's going to be 85 degrees all, almost all 24 hours a day. That's nice. This episode is sponsored by HelloFresh. We all know this time of year can get quite busy, but this year, say hello to a stressless holiday season with the help of HelloFresh. Skip the grocery store and save time with easy, tasty recipes delivered right to your door. Spend your time this month shopping for gifts and sipping cocoa, not stuck in the checkout line. Sign up for HelloFresh and get everything you need to whip up a fresh, tasty meal delivered to your door. Just choose your recipe, select a delivery date, and relax knowing dinner is on the way. Okay, all you Myrtle Beasts out there, I got some of these meals from HelloFresh, and one of them was crispy buffalo spicy chicken. Pork and pepper enchiladas with pico de gallo. Oh, pico cream. de gallo. Oh. <laughs> 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 okay. And penny with beef and zucchini ragu. And and I I don't even know if I could pick which one was the best one. Y'all might order. Y'all might have to order all three of these. Cause man, you talking about some good meals and it don't take long to fix them and they're delicious. I mean, that's some kind of good. So go to HelloFresh.com slash Myrtle Free and use code Myrtle Free for free breakfast for life. One breakfast item per box while subscription is active. That's free breakfast for life at HelloFresh.com slash Myrtle Free with code Myrtle Free. HelloFresh, America's number one meal kit. Nice. You can't never tell what's going to come out of my mouth. That is true. That is a true statement. (laughs) Care about your grooming as much as me and Link do? Unleash your legendary style with Mythical's line of grooming and personal care products. The collection features items from the hair on your face, hair on your head, and for everything else. Available now at Amazon.com slash Mythical. It's time for another edition of Myrtle Beach Mailbag. I got an email from Thomas Carter. Okay. And it, it says, I'm from Texas. You know, every all these people going to send you stuff from Texas. It's always bigger, you know, bigger and bigger, bigger. But yep. he says, I am a longtime fan of Good Mythical Morning and have been watching since I was in elementary school. I am 18 now and am old enough to get a tattoo. Okay. Tattoos are supposed to be of something of meaning that you care about. And what better than a tattoo that y'all picked for me? Really? Yeah. He he wants us to pick his tattoo? That's what he's saying. He said, I started watching when I was about nine or so, 
which be which would be roughly half my life. Even though dispatches from Myrtle Beach hasn't been around as long, I think that Charles should get a say in what my tattoo looks like. And okay. Then he's got in parentheses link. I am dead serious. I'll get whatever you want me to. Hmm. Well, it's definitely mm. going to be on the face. You know, right? We got to start there. If he's dead serious and he'll get whatever we want him to, I've got to, it's going to have to be the face. I'm not, I'm not going to make him. You and Post Malone, I'm not going, I ain't going to make him get a tattoo on his face. Well, hold on. I don't have but, one on my face. No, man. My, you know, my no. first one was on my ass cheek. It's, it still is. <laughs> yes. Uh, this is, yeah, this is tough. What do you do? You don't want to, yeah, I don't know. It's like, I don't want to be the one to like, what, what, what are you thinking, Dad? I, I, I kind of got a few that I, I've been looking at. It says, like, living the belch life. You know, what you keep saying that my golf cart uh, <laughs> got on. <laughs> Live in the in, so it could just be belch life like on his abdomen like Tupac's on tattoo. His own Tup well, abdomen. Tupac it said thug life. It could say belch life. Yeah. Ah, oh, that's mm. that's. I like that, Dad. Mm hmm. That's, and then that seems like it should, it's going to be big though. And Captain Fun Ambassador. Well, you're the Captain Fun Ambassador. Yeah. So. You're saying that you would give him that moniker, so he would be referring to himself as a, as an honorary fun ambassador. Maybe not the captain, but we could give him that. Maybe there's a captain's hat, and it says Captain Fun Ambassador underneath it. Maybe that's, you know, maybe it's on the on the pectoral. So it's only when you, when you're removing your shirt is when you're having a lot of fun, and that's when you show it to people. Oh, okay. Oh. He's removing his shirt. A oh, Captain Fun Ambassador. Oh, yes. I get it. I think that could but work. It, you know, I'm, I'm hoping maybe he might could just be like the one you got now on your arm where he, people could look at it and see it. Just a lot of plants. Yeah. Oh, no. Well, um, uh, I, you know what? I'm, I'm going back in. I'm going back in for more, Dad. I'm taking it down my arm. Are you? Yeah. I'm, I think I'm going to go I around. I think I'm going to go around Lance, my arm and come around the for the forearm part of it. You you and Lance talked about that at Thanksgiving, didn't you? Like he, yeah. he said something about he was going back in to get something else done too. So, uh, yeah, I think I'm going to do that. But I don't know. I think that Thomas should have. I don't know. First one should be something that in a place that I don't know. I did, I don't I don't I don't love having this amount of pressure i think it needs to be know. on the ass what a, what about chaz was here right on his ass well, that, like that you signed it kinda, i, I kind of like that one but i i really don't know if i like it enough because He's a guy and I'm a guy and I don't I, I really don't. <laughs> okay, you don't want you don't want to be you don't want to imply that you are riding on his bare ass. Yep. That's a, <clears throat> but I, I get mean that. And you you know, Thomas, I know you're dead serious about mm -hmm. wanting us to help you with a tattoo. Uh but you're eighteen years old. And I remember when I was 18 and I, and I, I had never got a tattoo and weren't going to get one then. <clears throat> but you don't have to get a tattoo with something from me and Link because I, I think you've got stuff you, in your life, which is you've been very young, that you can just uh, figure out maybe – when you're getting started and then met, let me and Link see what kind of tattoo you choose and get, and then maybe he and I can help you get the, help you get the second one. That's what I'm thinking. Okay. All right. We'll abdicate being the first because we don't want, we don't want to have to answer to, uh, to your loved ones that are mad. Yeah, or if well. you, if you come back and make a mistake, but 
it hurts to get one on your butt cheek, but that's that's a good place to just get one. And just just to just to ease into it, but I don't. Yeah, I don't. We just don't know enough about you, Thomas. We just don't yeah, know enough what, about you. We're gonna leave it. Just put a little TC behind your ear. There you go, a little TC. Yeah, yeah. I, that would be. I, I like that too, Linky. Maybe you ought to have you know on his butt cheek. You know, TC was here. He was. He was on. You were on your own ass cheek. You know. I I hope we didn't. Bust your bubble, uh, Thomas, about us picking something, but we're not falling for go, that trap. <laughs> yeah, you you go ahead and uh, kind of figure out what you want to get, and then you email uh, me again at rather be shagging at fifty three aol dot com, and then we'll see if we can help you with a tattoo the next time, <clears throat> and let go. us know a little bit more about yourself. Let us know some of the things that you like to do, what That's you do. Right, see? We need more info. And a second, it's got to be the second one. So there we go. I love that, Dad. You're very wise. I don't I don't want his uh, mom and daddy calling me and you up and say, mm-hmm. <laughs> you had my son put this on him, my, on his ass, and I don't like it. Exactly. <laughs> All right. Well, Dad, I got an idea. Um, okay. You know, we do the the role play segment sometimes, where we where we polish our acting skills, and um, you know, you're already dressed like an elf, and tis the season. So why don't yeah. why don't we do a, a little scene where um, you're an elf in Santa's workshop, and um, I'll be I'll be Santa, and but but the only thing that you know how to make are uh adult toys. <laughs> adult toys. Mm. Right. So no, no matter no matter what I'm tr- where I'm trying to send you it's like you just keep going you just, you, you can only make adult toys. Let's role play. Okay, you ready? Uh Let's go. Let's I get guess. in the character. All right, you got to have an elf voice. So get ready. You ready? I thought I was making adult toys. So I said an elf voice. <laughs> you got to use an elf voice to make adult toys. Yes. You ready? Okay. There we go. All right. All right. I'm going to action. <laughs> ho, 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 ho. I'm entering my. My workshop to see what my new elf employees are up to. Hello, little elf. What's your name? My name is Charles, and I'm I'm an elf for Santa Claus, and I'm making adult toys for Santa. Well, well, um, do you know who you're talking to? Yes, I think I'm talking to Santa. That's right. I'm your I'm your boss, and um. I, I, when I hired you, that was not in the job description. But uh, well, let's let's see what you've got. Um, show me one. Uh, show me some of your work. Well, I I made a thing where instead of Rudolph taking off with a shiny red nose, he's got a thing where he's hanging down and his balls and his penis is just flying through the air, and it. It's, he's using that to drop Santa in down the chimney, and so, where he delivers his toys because uh, he's using his toy. Gr- okay, well let me let me <laughs> let me see if I understand. You've made a toy that I ride, and I grab. The twig and the berries of the the toy reindeer, and it drops me into the chimney of to deliver my presents. So this is a this is a toy for me to use yeah. as an adult. Great, I think. I don't. I, I don't want to. I don't want to burst his bubble, <laughs> Mrs. Claus. I, let's just give him a chance. Maybe he's got something else in the works. Do you have anything else? In the works that you've been crafting? 
And then, because you were going to drop out, I made a nice big bed for you and Mrs. Claus that vibrates oh. and goes back and forth and Correct. moves up and down where mm-hmm. y'all can get in it when you're after you're doing all your work and dropping from your penis and balls when you get back home <laughs> that you can <laughs> have fun with Mrs. Claus. Yes, after I drop from my reindeer penis and balls, <laughs> I will be very exhausted, not unlike a fireman who traverses his pole much. <sighs> What do you think, Mrs. Claus? He's crafted a, a what is it, a vibrating bed? Yes. They okay. used to have them in motel rooms, so I made you a nice big one where you can use it all year long. Great. I'm kind of warming up to this concept here. <laughs> I just, but your name is Elf Charles. Is that what you've said? Yes. Okay. Uh, d- um, d- I- Dare I ask, do you have one other toy that you've conceptualized that with proper funding you might make on a large scale for all uh, to enjoy? Oh, for everybody to enjoy. My goodness. Well, I was just trying to please you and, and Mrs. Claus, but to make everybody happy, we could make Make them all these beds that vibrate, and when when they're adults, they'll be able to uh, have fun with their wives and friends and whoever they want to. Okay, that's uh, right, that's yeah. right. Whoever whoever can fit in the bed, wives yeah. and friends. So I, I don't, you know, that that's just the best I can do right now, off the top of my head. Trying well, that's, to that's you're make you're extremely creative, you. Charles. I must say, I did not, I, I was not sold on this concept at first, but you shall receive my complete funding for this endeavor. Okay. The vibrating beds, the Charles Special, we'll call it. Yes. Good. Uh, I, send me some sketches. Uh, I'll, I'll have stuff drawn up for me when you get back from dropping off your testicles from <laughs> Rudolph. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> Dropping off my testicles from Rudolph. Okay, that was that was successful. Um, what a you know if if you weren't in the holiday spirit before now, I uh, hope you are now. You know, Myrtle Beast. Yeah, you're welcome. I hope so. Good work. Yeah. Good yeah. work. Yeah. Wow. <clears throat> well. You know, I, I've had a good time today. Me too. And uh, it's just amazing what you can get me into or what I can get you into. But Hey, don't blame <laughs> me. <laughs> yeah, I guess it was my idea. To, it was my idea. But, <laughs> <laughs> but, so, but was, so was the ribs. So yeah. you, you got it. you know, you never know until you try it out. Yeah. So there you That's go. That's right. Yeah, I had fun, was, Dad. It was fun. Having all, you all here with us today, just a reminder, reminder that this is our last full episode of the year, mm-hmm. but we'll still be releasing many dispatches until we're back with a full episode on January the 9th. January don't, 9th. Don't forget to click those follow and subscribe, sus, oh God, subscribe buttons wherever you get your podcast on YouTube. And rate and review us on Apple Podcasts while you're at it. If you got a joke, question, comment you'd like to share with, with me, email me at ratherbeshagging53 at aol.com. <clears throat> and we can't wait to spin your world again next time. And Merry Christmas, Link, and Happy Holidays to everybody and all you Myrtle Beasts out there. Huh, huh, huh. <laughs> Oh! Happy holidays to you too, Dad. Merry Christmas. I love you. Love you too. <laughs> <laughs>